our presenters. Uh, first, just a little background on our presenters. Scott Allen is a program manager at the Public Library Association. PLA is a division of the American Library Association and has nearly 9,000 individual members working in the country's 16,000 public library buildings. In addition to digitallearn.org, Scott is responsible for PLA's work on family engagement, health, and fundraising. Previously, Scott was the education director for PLA and has also been the executive director of the Illinois chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Scott holds a bachelor's degree in English and linguistics from Northwestern University and a master's degree in nonprofit management from Spurtis College. Andrea Sines serves as the first deputy commissioner for Chicago Public Library, a system of 80 neighborhood branches. In this role, she leads program design and evaluation and supports strategy, innovation, and organizational development. Before joining the library, Andrea served as chief of staff to the Chicago Public Schools CEO, coordinating strategy and implementation of district-wide initiatives. Andrea was previously policy advisor to the Assistant Secretary of Career, Technical, and Adult Education at the U.S. Department of Education in Washington, D.C., and Executive Director of the Hispanic Alliance for Career Enhancement. Andrea holds a bachelor's degree in Latin American Studies from Scripps College and a master's degree in public administration from the University of Pennsylvania. So welcome, Scott and Andrea, and at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Scott. Thank you, Alex and Melissa, and uh, thank you to Florida for inviting us to talk today. We're very excited to talk about digital literacy and what we've been doing here at PLA and at the Chicago Public Library. Um, for an agenda, uh, I'm going to talk briefly about Digital Learn and how it was developed, talk about what it features now and what you can do with the site, um, talk about some exciting things we're doing in 2016, including our work with the Chicago Public Library, and mention a few ways that we know libraries are using the site. Um, then I'd also like to ask for your input and questions and see if we have some new ideas come up during the webinar. So let's just briefly discuss why PLA developed digitallearn.org. Um, I hardly need to tell an audience of librarians why digital literacy is important, because I know patrons come into your libraries every day wanting to accomplish a life task that many of us take for granted, but lacking those basic computer or internet skills to accomplish it. Uh, whether it's finding and applying for a job online, learning more about a health condition, connecting to their grandchildren via Facebook, or looking up new recipes, they often know what they want to do, but they're unable to do it without some basic computer help. So just looking at the latest Pew Research Center report on libraries, we see a lot of, the, of statistics about the need for digital literacy. 94% of the respondents to the research said that libraries should offer programs to teach people, including kids and senior citizens, how to use digital tools such as computers, smartphones, and apps, with nearly 80% of respondents saying libraries should definitely do this. A very strong majority of Americans, 76%, said that libraries should definitely offer programs to teach people how to protect their privacy and security online. Uh, so libraries should teach digital literacy, and we, as we know, they're doing it, and they're doing it well. 75% uh, of respondents to the survey said libraries have been effective at helping people learn how to use net new technologies. And importantly, um, high school graduates and lower income households say libraries help them a lot in learning these new technologies. And this is all contributing to economic advancement in the community. Uh, but while libraries um, can and do teach technology, we maybe aren't reaching as many people as we could. Uh, just 7% of respondents to the survey said they've taken a library class on how to use the internet or computers. And similarly, only a modest number of online users turn to libraries for help with digital applications like government, banks, schools, or other businesses. Only about 14% of respondents who encounter challenges with these applications said they have turned to the public library for help. So these types of statistics and this need led the Public Library Association to develop what we call digitallearn.org. Uh, in 2012, we were awarded a two-year grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services to develop the site, and we hired uh, two firms, Anil out of Denver and Kixel, which is a training and instructional design firm, to help us develop a set of courses that we would make available online for public libraries, their patrons, and others to learn how to use computers and the internet. Of course, we consulted our public library members to find out what they wanted in the site and what level the courses should be developed at. Um, and then we worked to make the courses as user-friendly as possible. Uh, we launched the website in 2013, <coughs> featuring what has now become the 14 core courses. Um, and we also added a 
um, community of practice section to help digital uh, literacy trainers share information. Um, and then in 2015, we were excited to bring on some new funding partners and start to develop some new features, which we'll talk about momentarily. So we have a number of different partners who are helping us with digitallearn.org. Um, IMLS obviously was the fund, initial funding partner, the chief officers of state library agencies and the ALA Office for Information Technology Policy helped us in the early stages to advise us on how to develop the site. Uh, and the ALA Office for Diversity, Literacy, and Outreach Services is now a partner in helping to do some new features, as well as the Chicago Public Library. And you'll hear from Andrea shortly. So what is digitallearn.org? Hopefully a lot of you have seen the site, but for those who haven't, there's really two main features to the site. Uh, the first that I'll talk about just briefly is the community of practice. So if you go to the digitallearn.org homepage and you click help learners, uh, you go to this site, which is essentially a, a bulletin board, a sharing resource for technology trainers and others, library staff who find themselves needing to teach technology, uh, to share information, to promote upcoming resources, um, to post training materials, uh, to, to seek input from others who are also doing digital literacy training. Uh, from 2014 to early 2016, we had over 10,000 registered users on this community of practice, and there were over 400 posts to share information. Um, so we hope it's meeting a need, and we hope to expand access to this and make it more user-friendly uh, in 2016. But the main features of Digital Learn are the courses for the learners. So this is a screenshot um, of the home page, and it shows you some of the courses uh, that are on there. There's about 14. Um, and for those who are familiar with Digital Learn, one change that we made this year was to uh, make the courses available directly on the home screen. So anyone going to digitallearn.org now will immediately see the topics and courses and be able to click on them and begin right away. Uh, the section, as I mentioned, has 14 modules. They range from 6 to 22 minutes each, and they're video-based. Uh, what you see on the screen now is the intro to email course. And as you can see, it's very clear in terms of explaining how many lessons there are, how long it takes, um, what the topics are, and it also shows the user what they've completed. In this case, they've completed uh, lessons one and two, um, but have not completed three and four or five and six, which are not showing on the screen. Um, we wrote these courses at the fourth grade reading level with a few exceptions since there are some computer terms that don't really go below the sixth grade reading level. And they're mostly mobile device friendly, although there are some lessons that say using a mouse where you wouldn't really be able to practice or, or do the lesson on a mobile device. Um, each module, as I mentioned, is a video and it has narration. And one feature we are adding to the site later this year is going, are going to be um, closed captioning. So that a user who isn't able to listen to the narration or use headphones would be able to read um, the, the script. Also, um, after each course, you can access a full transcript. It's a PDF that gives the entire text, all the screenshots, and all the text of the modules. Um, so that's a helpful feature if a user wants to take that home or read it later. So what's currently on the website? <clears throat> These are the 14 courses. I know the screen's a little busy, but I wanted to show how PLA was very intentional about developing each module with specific lessons that are very short. We know that the um, library setting isn't always conducive to a long um, computer session and that these learners actually uh, learn better when they are given things in small doses. Uh, we found from some of our user data actually that some of the individual lessons within the modules um, get repeated a lot. So we'll see data showing that a user, for instance, did getting started on the computer and completed it, but then went back and did the mouse lesson three or four times because they really wanted to practice and they, they, they weren't quite getting it. Um, so we think that we've developed courses that really meet basic user needs quite, quite well. So what's coming up in the future for Digital Learn? Um, we have a number of different developments that we're working on right now that I think you'll all be excited to hear about. Um, so if we could advance to the next slide. First, we do have some new modules coming out. Um, we're hoping to do five or six this year. 
Um, topics that we have already started in development include safety and security, so things like logging in, passwords, scams, phishing, those types of topics. We're also doing more about um, storage options such as USB devices. Um, and we have a new course coming out that I'm particularly excited about because it came um, directly from our work uh, <laughs> with Chicago Public Library and hearing their, their staff's experience working with patrons. Um, it's actually not teaching technologies per se, but it's addressing fears that patrons or users have in terms of using computers and technology. Um, so we've all had uh, patrons or people come to us and, and they really need know they need to learn computers, but they're scared. They think that they will lose uh, privacy, lose information, that they'll break something. Um, so we're doing a course specifically on um, some of those common fears and how to get beyond them. We're also very excited to um, be rolling out all of our courses in Spanish. If you look at the digitallearn.org site right now, there is a toggle at the top left corner for English and Spanish, uh, but right now you'll only see two courses um, in Spanish. In a few weeks, uh, we'll have all 14 of the existing courses uh, online in Spanish, uh, and then every course we do after, the, after this will be um, done in both English and Spanish. Another uh, feature that we've just added this year <coughs> is uh, the ability for users to log in. Um, previously, Digital Learn was open access. It was simply a website, and people could go and start a course without having to create an account. They can still do that. Um, if, as I showed earlier, the home page shows them the courses, and there's no uh, requirement that they log in or create an account. But we understood that people did want that option, and, they, and users and learners wanted the ability to see what they'd completed go back and get certificates again. Um, so we have created, along with, uh, with our work with Chicago Public Library, a sign up and log in feature. Um, I just want to point out a few things on this screen because it shows you a little bit about how we've developed Digital Learn to be very specific for this group of learners. Um, if you look under sign up, um, of course, the first thing you need to create an account is an email. And we know a lot of these learners don't have email yet. They don't know how to use email. They haven't set up a, an account. And actually, they're coming to this site perhaps to learn that. Um, so you'll see it right under the email box uh, a link to the tutorial on how to set up an email address um, so that they can certainly do that first and then come back and sign up. You'll also notice if you, put, if you see under uh, your password and re-enter your password a place where um, it says hide password. Typically, when you create an account, um, the default is that your password would be hidden, that you would see asterisks as you type. Um, our site is the opposite, because we know these users uh, have trouble typing. They're not used to creating passwords. They need to see exactly what they type so they can retype it. Um, and the default is actually to view and display the password. And also, yeah. passwords can be anything. Um, there are no requirements in terms of the number of uh, letters or special characters or numbers. Scott, um, this is Melissa. I'm going to jump in just for a second here. Amy has her hand up. Amy, did you want to ask a question? I'm going to unmute you. OK, Amy, if you've got a question, um, I don't know if you've got a microphone, you can go ahead and type it into the chat panel. Um, but Scott, we'll, we'll go ahead and keep going. OK. Um, thank you. So if we go to the next screen, just a couple quick suggestions on how libraries um, can and are using digitallearn.org. Um, so first, we'd love for uh, computers in libraries to be linked, have it uh, bookmarked to the, to the website, or even have it as a, an icon or a, a home screen, um, so that learners know that this is a resource that they can, can access to learn how to use technology. Um, we hope you'll spread this around your library staff so that any staff in any capacity understand that there's this resource out there and when they encounter a patron who, who maybe seems to need some help, um, that they can refer them to Digital Learn. We also have um, some flyers. You'll see a small example on the screen um, that we've created that a library or branch can personalize. So you'll see there's some blank space there, computer training from X branch uh, or X library. Um, and you can put in your address. So if anyone's interested in those flyers, you can certainly let me know and we can send you um, the PDFs of those. 
Um, and then we also know that there's a lot of partners out in the community that are working with, with clients, patrons who don't have those digital skills. And if the library um, helps to spread the word about digital learn, it would be win-win for everyone. The library is seen as a resource, digital learn gets used, and those community partners have a resource to help their, their clients learn computers. We also would like um, networks and state library agencies to spread the word about digital learn. Um, we've seen digital learn be used for staff training, actually. Um, the, in Alaska, there are rural library IT aides um, who started using digital learn to, to learn some basic computer skills. And the Alaska State Library has actually decided to give all librarians in the state a detailed training through digitallearn.org. Um, we've also seen uh, spikes in referrals from specific URLs to digital learn, for instance, from school systems who had staff orientation or staff training day and had picked a module or two that they wanted all their teachers and, and aides to go through to learn something. Um, we'd also love to hear from you about new training content. As I mentioned, we have quite a few in process, uh, but we're always looking for more at that kind of basic user level that we are shooting for. Um, and if you're encountering patrons who have specific needs, please let us know because it could become one of the courses we develop. At that, this point, I'd like to pause a little bit and, and Melissa and Alex see if there's any questions from the audience. Thanks, Scott. Um, I don't see any right this second, um, but we're going to give people a minute to type their questions in. If anybody has any questions for Scott, please put them into chat now um, and we will make sure those things get addressed. I've got a question. Are we married? No? Um, Scott, I've got a question. This is this sure. is Wally. Um, what do you see coming down the pike for new content? Do you, are you working on some things that are in the horizon? Sure. Um, we actually have a, about a list of about 20 different topics that digital literacy trainers and library staff have suggested to us. Um, that's part of the community of practice section. We, we, we monitor that to see what people are asking for. Um, we, as I mentioned, we're, we're moving forward with some safety and security courses and some more courses on how to save documents and, and including the cloud and USBs and or, uh, flash drives, things like that. Um, we uh, have also been asked to do some sec kind of secondary um, courses in terms of uh, Word and Excel to give more skills like that. Um, we may not actually go forward with too many of those because there are a lot of great resources out there um, that teach uh, higher level uh, in d content such as that. Um, I'm trying to think what some of the other topics we've had come up are. Um, uh, booking, we have booking airfare now, but there's more interest interest in um, travel, um, hobbies. We've had a suggestion that we um, do kind of an overview of, of sites that help with you know, cooking and genealogy and other hobby type things because we know a lot of people come into libraries um, wanting to do that but not knowing how to use computers. Um, so those are some of the topics we've been working on. Awesome. Thank you. Scott, we also have a question from the field from Nicholas. And the question is, has your experience been that users are self-sufficient or require staff assistance? And are these suitable for inclusion in a staff or volunteer taught live class? Thanks. So I'm going to briefly answer that, but I think Andrea will have a lot more to say because of her experience with the Chicago Public Library and their branch staff. Um, we think that Digital Learn is set up so that users can sit down and actually go through a course by themselves and get a lot out of it. Um, clearly, having a blended learning experience where you have an instructor helping is going to be good. And we do know that um, we've seen, we've we've heard from libraries who actually show the digital learning course as part of a live instruction, and everyone views it, and then they break it down and talk about it. So it really is sort of flexible, but it ultimately um, it is designed so that individuals can do it by themselves. Go ahead, Andrea. Yeah, I was going to add that, you know, we've found that many of these very, very beginner learners um, need a human to help them primarily to give them a little boost of self-confidence. The fear issue that Scott uh, mentioned earlier is really big. And although Digital Learn is absolutely designed to take the learner through the learning experience on their own um, in an interactive kind of live online way, we've really seen it as best used in a, in a blended environment where a coach or a teacher or somebody can 
help um, create kind of con a context for the digital learn experience, help encourage the user to get through the you know sign up process and make a plan for learning, and then um, sort of check in from time to time to make sure that the learner is making progress, doesn't have too many questions, et cetera. Thanks, Andrea. Does anybody else have any questions for Scott and Andrea? Okay, we'll keep an eye on chat, but um, it looks like we can keep going. Great. Thank you very much. So what I'm going to do now is just talk about um, one quick library example of how a library has been using Digital Learn, and then turn it over to Andrea um, to talk more in detail about Chicago Public Library. Um, but one of the reasons I wanted to share this example is, you know, it is a website that you can just go to and people can learn from, but um, a lot of libraries have found ways to integrate it into what they're doing already that we think is great, and we want to encourage that. And I'll just also preface this by saying that um, all of the files we've developed for Digital Learn are open source and available to anyone. We can help you navigate to them, and um, if you're, you or your IT staff are able to take them and use them in some specific way for your library, we really encourage that. Um, so St. Paul Public Library actually is probably the um, star user of Digital Learn. We get the most um, referrals to the courses from their websites uh, because of this specific project I'm going to mention. Uh, in 2010, the St. Paul Public Library and a lot of other community partners participated in a process uh, to uh, best assess and quantify digital literacy knowledge among lower skilled adults. Um, this was related to employment and job seekers, and through this process they developed what they call the North Star Digital Literacy Standards, which are online at digitalliteracyassessment.org. Um, so once they had those standards set up, the library felt compelled to create resources to help uh, patrons and other community members uh, develop those skills to meet those standards. So what they did was they created this website um, that lists the different standards and then links patrons or community members to learning resources that help them develop those skills. Um, what I've done on the screen there is point out how they took certain lessons, not even uh, the modules, but even more detailed, the lessons within the modules, and link them to those different standards. And so when you click on those links, you might go straight into a lesson within a module in Digital Learn. Um, and we think this is wonderful. It really takes the content that we've developed and, and directly integrates it into something that the, the community had developed and the community wanted to put out there. Um, so, so we're we're happy that St. Paul did this, and we encourage other libraries to uh, to take take that lead and and figure out what they're doing and where those courses could fit. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Andrea, um, who I think will tell tell you all about Chicago Public Library. Hello, everyone. Um, I want to just start by giving you a little bit of context. So Chicago Public Library, as uh, mentioned in the introduction, has 80 locations across the city of Chicago. And at these 80 locations, we have a little over 2,800 public computers available for, um, uh, for city residents to use. And we also have a program that is a privately funded, privately supported program called Cyber Navigators. These are essentially computer tutors. We have 60 such folks who work at libraries across the city, um, providing anywhere from six hours to, uh, here at the Central Library, 60 hours of hands-on computer instruction um, to folks who come in and, and need help. And for the last several years, they've done a around 100,000 uh, computer tutoring sessions across the city of Chicago. Some are one-on-one. -on -one, Others are small group classes, and we expect that number to go up a bit this year just based on usage so far uh, in the early part of the year. And um, just last week, after a long uh, and really rewarding process of design and customization with Scott and the team that um, built Digital Learn, uh, we've launched Digital Learn as the core curriculum um, as the, the main tool for these cyber navigators to use to help our patrons learn what we believe to be the most critical and basic computer skills, those skills that make it possible to engage in job search, information search, and communication. Um, and not only uh, will we use Digital Learn as the core computer skills curriculum across our libraries, 
but uh, our partners uh, in the large and complex Chicago workforce development and adult education systems have also decided to um, adopt digital learn as uh, a way to teach their learners these skills. Um, and we also expect now, because of this citywide effort, uh, to be able to use analytics from Digital Learn to understand the extent to which we may, um, as a community of practitioners across the city, really be moving the needle on those very basic skills and helping Chicagoans access um, the kinds of services that can really increasingly only, only be available online. Um, now, how did we get here? We started this process uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, and really began our, our focus on digital skills and digital literacy um, after uh, we decided as a library system that we wanted to pay special attention to in increasing and, and defining our role in helping people gain access to the workforce development system and career pathways uh, available in the city of Chicago. And we began our process by kind of mapping the system this is a very you know, basic illustration of the inventory that we took of um, the workforce development universe in the city of Chicago. And it includes um, organizations that provide direct service to job seekers. It includes um, the policy uh, uh, folks that help shape policy in Chicago and the funders, both private and public, um, that make up this, this universe. And so, um, you know, we know that digital skills aren't developed in a, in a vacuum, nor are they necessarily for our learners an end in themselves. Um, our patrons, you know, we found come in and ask for help with these digital skills um, to achieve something, something of relevance in their lives. And more often than not, for us in Chicago, that something is uh, engaging in a job search. So because job applications are really all entirely online these days, we find that we see you know, about a third or a half, kind of depending month to month, of our um, patrons that come in for help using computers are there because they want help filling out a job application, developing a resume, or something like that. Um, so we saw this kind of intersection of digital skill need and workforce need as a real opportunity to um, put our heads together with this group of partners and peer organizations in Chicago and um, think about how the library can, um, can really help uh, bridge that skills gap for these learners. We know that workforce dollars, for example, are very scarce and that most of the investment in skill development is uh, skills that lead very specifically to a particular job, qualifications to do a job and that those job skills tend to be more advanced than just the basic, you know, how to, how to use a browser and how to use email work that so many of our patrons needed. So um, we um, held a series of dialogues with stakeholders from all of these organizations and together kind of laid out, you know, what role the library can be playing or should be playing um, to help connect more of our patrons to the really good career and adult education services available across Chicago. And so um, we really landed on uh, six uh, areas uh, where the library um, has been focusing our time and energy over the last year and a half or so. Uh, next slide, please. And um, one of them really was uh, that we continue to invest in access to technology and provide leadership for the city uh, in a pathway to developing what we consider these kind of gateway skills. Um, through all these dialogues, you know, we realized that the library was already doing the bulk of the digital access and digital skill building work in the city of Chicago. We had um, over two and a half million computer access sessions in the city that year, and over 3 million Wi-Fi sessions. So we knew that Chicagoans had already come to really rely on the library as a place to gain access to technology. Um, and then we also started to talk with these uh, providers and ask them about the curricula that they were using to help learners gain these basic skills. So many of the folks 
who came to those initial dialogues were direct service providers and um, were using you know everything from PowerPoint presentations developed by a curriculum consultant a year ago to um, stitching together a variety of online resources to help learners with these skills, but there was no consensus sort of tool or curriculum that people were using. So um, as a major part of the work we're doing to improve access and use of, Ch of Chicago's adult education and workforce services system, we decided to take a really deep look at those gateway skills that were keeping people from fully participating and um, think about what we could do to create a curriculum that accelerated the um, pace of learning for those learners. And um, so we put together an advisory group that was essentially a subset of our original stakeholder uh, group. And with them, really tried to figure out how to best address this skills gap. Uh, our idea initially was to use existing online tools and curricula and possibly create a short playlist that pulled together kind of the best of a variety of tools that digital skills teachers were already using. So we thought, you know, at the end of this process, we might end up with a website with lots of links to the best curricula based on the needs that we developed. Um, and we got this group to advise us over the course of several meetings to explore these questions on the right-hand side of the screen, which is, you know, is creating a new approach to digital skills a good idea? Is it something that's really needed right now? And we clearly landed on yes to that to that question. Um, you know, we wanted to define with these advisors which digital skills needed to be included, which ones specifically, right? Because when we say basic digital skills, everybody has sort of a different answer. And so we pooled all the answers and, and came to a consensus around um, which skills. And then, you know, we asked them which tools should be deployed. We, we took an inventory and I think started off with something like 36 different um, learning tools or curricula. And then, um, you know, with their help, we also said, you know, how would you evaluate this effort if at the end of the day we're successful in pulling this off? What are we really trying to achieve and how will we know that we're succeeding? Um, so we started with this uh, consensus building process of which skills we were talking about. This next slide is also really busy, uh, um, but it's really just a snapshot of what our um, curriculum consultant was able to pull together once we got everybody to agree on you know, what, what we wanted to use. We used and relied heavily on the California Emerging Technology Fund, California ICT Digital Literacy Assessments and Curriculum Framework to identify the competencies we wanted to focus on. These are similar to the skill standards developed by UNESCO, but we found the language to be a little more accessible in the way they were described. And we collected information about these 36 different tools that people were using, and we mapped them to these competencies that are really you know, pretty widely accepted as the core um, skills that, that people need in order to engage in online um, activities. And our instructional designer reviewed, and we narrowed our focus uh, on tools that met another criteria. So one, they needed to focus on these skills. And as Scott mentioned, we found a lot of tools and curricula that focused on more advanced skills. There's really, you know, kind of an embarrassment of riches out there when it comes to the more advanced technology skills. But on the very basic side, um, our, our, uh, our search really narrowed to just a, a handful of tools. I think maybe six or so um, is where we landed initially. And so we wanted to make sure that they addressed these skill needs, but we also wanted to make sure that they were going to be, um, that they were going to provide a good learning experience for our users and our learners. So we agreed as a group that we had other criteria that were important. The first was making the pathway to uh, digital proficiency visible to the users. So we did want the learner to be able to see, OK, I don't really know anything about computers now, but these are the five or six things that I need to learn in order to be able to confidently use a computer by myself. We wanted that to be visible to the learner and for them to be able to um, as Scott said earlier, track their progress along that learning path. Um, we realized quickly that uh, we wanted whatever tool we adopted or, or lessons we adopted to be web-based so that there was no 
problem with you know having to download things on public computers you can't do that and it just created too many problems to have to download anything so we wanted it to be entirely web based we also found with early testing of many of these tools that our learners strongly preferred the video based um, lessons so not a lot of reading was required and it made you know uh, learning a little bit more accessible and enjoyable, we found, to our learners. Um, and then we also wanted to be able to link what they were learning in the lesson to real-life applications, to places where they could practice those skills and put those skills to use immediately that would help them with the, the, the real kind of life um, needs that they came to us with in the first place. So. You know, we wanted to be able to, once someone completed a module on filling out online forms or using the internet, to be able to go ahead and begin, you know, doing um, job applications online or public benefits applications, um, et cetera. So we did uh, a series then, after identifying these skills, of self-assessments with our patrons in the library where we asked them to rate their own um, uh, ability to do these basic things like move the mouse, open a file, um, you know, create a document, those kinds of things. And then um, we asked them about their basic internet skills, how confident were they being able to search, download, upload, send information online. Um, and we found that, you know, of the couple hundred people who participated in that self-assessment during the week that we did it, um, only about a third had any level of confidence doing those very basic tasks. And so that helped us to really verify and confirm that these basic skills that we've been focused on were the right ones for our patron population. So after we did all that, we went to um, the three tools that we found best matched the criteria that we'd set out. And those were Digital Learn, Job Scout, and some curricula available, made available um, to us by Microsoft. And we asked our cyber navigators, a small group of them that we trained and brought together, to introduce these tools to learners in the library in a real world context. And um, the percentages on the left there really are the, the percentages of, of learners who really chose to use the tool here uh, in each category once they were able to see what the learning experience there was like. So that gave us a signal pretty early on that um, Digital Learn was going to be the learning environment that our patrons, that our learners really preferred. So um, these tests, um, after these tests, you know, we, we found, wow, Digital Learn really has just about everything that we wanted. There were a couple of things I mentioned. Um, that weren't available initially, like making the path to learning, uh, you know, visible to the learner and, and allowing them to track their progress, which is why when we reached out to Digital Learn to PLA and said, would you be willing to make some modifications to your site and your tool, um, you know, would you work with us to do this? We were thrilled to find that, you know, they were willing and that Scott was ready to go and that they had already been thinking about making some modifications anyway. So. Based on um, user testing in libraries and user feedback over the course of several more weeks, um, we were able to um, ask for some specific changes, many of which you'd, you'd already, you've already heard about from Scott today. Great. Thank you so much, Andrea. That um, really gave a good overview of how you uh, arrived at your where you are now. And what I want to do just to kind of wrap things up before we get to questions is, is talk a little bit about how um, we have now worked with Chicago Public Library to, to kind of go to the next phase or the next level for digital learn. And as Andrea mentioned, it was, the, it was just fortuitous that they came to us and said, we've been looking at your site and we think it needs some features that we would love to see some features because we thought, what can we do to take digital learn to the next level? And it was a, a perfect marriage there. Um, so as you've already seen, We've changed the site to allow learners to log in and create accounts. Um, this allows them to save their progress, to uh, go back and collect their certifications. They get a certificate when they finish each course, and those are stored there. 
Um, there's also a course recommendation tool to help them figure out what they need to learn and, and where to get it, um, and a custom course list that they then see as a, as, a as a learner who's logged in. I'll show those in just a second. Um, and so that's one side of what we've done. Uh, the second side is really to help the libraries and other organizations um, use the site better as administrators. So they um, can create custom course content, um, page content, as Andrea mentioned, to help uh, connect users and learners to local resources. They get user analytics, which is very important to show their impact in the community. And of course, it's co-branded. So I'll show exam quick examples of all of this. So uh, when a learner creates an account now, um, and you'll see if you look at the top left, um, this is the Chicago Public Library, chicagodigitallearn.org site that we've just finished rolling out and testing with, with the city. Um, <clears throat> you'll see that they get a quick question tool to help them determine uh, what courses they should take initially to meet their goals. Um, you'll see all three questions on this screen, but that's just the way we've displayed it so you can see it when the user actually logs in. Uh, they get one question at a time because we want them to really be able to read and think about them and not be overwhelmed. Um, once they answer this question, these questions, it will, based on some algorithms, uh, put together a course list for them and it becomes their learning plan or their courses. And so here you can see an example of uh, my plan and it's it, in this case it looks like the person probably was looking to um, find a job because it has Microsoft Word creating resumes, online job searching. Um, you can also see it tells them where they are in terms of how complete they are in for doing each course. And there's a box at the bottom that says ready to learn more and that's for a user who completes what was initially in their plan and wants to go back and add more courses um, to it. They can retake the quiz or also if they happen to go to any other course that isn't in their plan and start it, it automatically gets added to their learning plan and it will show up here when they look at their courses. Um, so those are just some quick features that are new for the, the learners. Uh, for the Chicago Public Library staff and for other library staff who work with us to build sites like this, um, there's some really exciting back-end features that we think will make the site even more valuable. So this is just a quick snapshot of, of the administrative dashboard. Um, you can see on the left uh, that the library has the option to import our existing digital learn courses to their site. Um, so they can pick and choose, and I think you know, most libraries we think will pick all 14 plus that we have um, coming out this year, um, but if there's something they've already developed that meets one of the same uh, objectives or they simply want to focus just on you know, job seekers or something, they can do that and they can customize the course list. Um, another very exciting feature though is that they can add a new course. Um, if right now all of our course files are in Articulate Storyline, uh, we will be expanding that in the future so that other programs can, uh, can be included, but a library staff could simply build a course and then have it offered just like any other course in their uh, digitallearn.org site. Um, this is just another quick uh, example of a screenshot that the library staff see in order to uh, import a course. They can edit, they can change the title, they can change the summary if they want to link it to something specific in their community um, and the description. Um, <clears throat> and then there are other options in terms of um, adding resources. Uh, if you could go to the next screen. Uh, what a really exciting feature is, um, is that we've allowed uh, the libraries that work with us on their own sites um, to add uh, post-course uh, supplemental materials and post-course instructions that help learners practice and use their new skills. Um, <clears throat> so this is a great way to connect what the learner and is doing in the library to local resources, um, which are simply put in very easy for uh, library staff to do this, and then they show up at the end of the module when the when the learner completes it. I've got a question, Scott. Um, sure. Whenever you're available, it, um, is Digital Learn freely accessible on the web, or must it be linked to the library registration library car? Thanks. Um, Digital Learn is freely accessible. If you just go to digitallearn.org, you'll see um, the, the the courses and all the website, the, the, everything the website has to offer. Um, and for Chicago, uh, Andrea, do you want to comment on what you've added in terms of the login requirements? Yes, uh, the Chicago site is at um, chicago.digitallearn.org, uh, and it 
does not require a library card registration at all. It is freely accessible on the web inside and outside the library. We have um, put in a feature, though, so that learners who are using this in a Chicago Public Library or who use the library um, have the option of putting in which branch they use so that we can start to get a sense of um, which uh, libraries are really supporting um, communities of learners more, and, and it just helps us kind of understand what's going on across the city. Um, but this is available, and we expect to make it available to um, folks no matter where they are in the city of Chicago. Okay, we've got another qu question for Andrea. Um, is there any staff involvement in the learning process, and do learners access the site on any library computer, or are there certain computers or computer lab used for that purpose? So, um, as I said, this is available on any computer, library, or personal, or school, or you know, um, community-based organization, and. There is um, the cyber navigators right now are our primary kind of word of mouth tool to get the word out that this site is available for learners. And we really expect them to use it. And the way that, that the testing group has been using it is as a blended learning tool. So they're able to get learners logged in, started, and then let them go through the modules on their own and then check back in and provide the kind of moral support, encouragement, uh, additional tips, additional resources that many of our, our learners seem to respond to really, really positively. Um, we've also introduced this to our library staff in Chicago. Very few librarians are um, teaching courses or spending time one-on-one -on -one with learners because we have this additional resource, which is the Cyber Navigator. Um, but all of the librarians across the system has, have also now been introduced to the digital learn tool so that they can offer it as a resource to, to learners. And um, can you repeat the site of the Chicago Library? Yeah, chicago.digitallearn.org. OK, there's no more questions. We can keep going. I think I have one more slide. Um, I just wanted to show an example of what Chicago has done that I think is really shows the value of, of this collaboration. Um, this is what a learner would see after completing the online job searching module in the Chicago website specifically. This is different from what they would see if they completed it on digitallearn.org, uh, but because this is personalized for Chicago and for its, its community partners. And what you'll see here is that they've added for practicing and using your skills links to the Illinois WorkNet Job Finder, um, uh, links to local support centers. Um, they've even put up under additional resources a list of nearby food service jobs, including you know fast food restaurants that are often hiring. Uh, which just makes this so valuable to someone who comes into the library knowing that they need to, to get a job, knowing that they need to learn computer skills, and being able to do both and actually meet their objective um, as opposed to trying to put it all together through a number of different resources. Um, so I just think this is incredible and um, we'll see hopefully some great results. Um, coming up uh, through Chicago. Um, this site that we've built for Chicago, the intent, um, uh, thanks to the support of Chicago and its uh, funders, but also PLA and IMLS, we hope to recreate this site for other libraries and library systems um, so that they can then get the back-end data and see the impact and personalize the training and the resources that are promoted. Um, so as the year goes on, we will be talking to different library systems about how to set it up for them um, and hopefully have a number of sites like this around the country. So unless Andrea has anything further to say, I think we've covered what we wanted to, and we'd be happy to take uh, some more questions or um, suggestions. Thanks, Scott. And this is Melissa. You guys, um, if you've got any questions or comments, please put them into the chat or raise your hand, and we'll get you unmuted. And just as a side note, if any of you are watching with more than one of you in, at a computer, you know, if you're sitting in a room with other people, please let us know in the chat so that we can uh, record that for our stats. Okay, we have another question from Nicholas. 
Uh, where should libraries interested in setting up personalized sites go to find out more? Great question. Um, well, first of all, if anyone will be in uh, Denver next week at the Public Library Association Conference, we will have a booth. Um, there will be staff uh, there who have actually built the site who can answer um, general questions and technical questions and have a little tool to collect some information from libraries that are uh, interested in building their own site. Otherwise, you can simply go to digitallearn.org um, and go to the About page, and it lists um, some contact information, and I think our contact information is also going to be provided on the next slide. So um, simply reach out to me, and we will start talking. Okay, and from Rosemary, how soon is archived version of this webinar available? I guess that's for us. <laughs> Hi, Rosemary. This is Melissa. Um, I should have it up on YouTube today, assuming that there's no problems, and um, we'll get that sent out to you hopefully by the end of this week. Um, another question from Nicholas. Is there an expense to participating libraries? At the moment, uh, we are still trying to figure that out. As I mentioned, the um, Files are all uh, open source, so if a library has certain capacities, they are able to do it themselves. Um, we are also seeking some additional grant funding from IMLS right now to be able to spread the site to uh, a, a large number of libraries, as, much, as many as possible. Um, in the interim, though, uh, we maybe need to charge a little bit for the customization and hosting, um, but we do think it'll, if we charge anything, it will be very modest. We want to make sure that this gets out and it's, and it's used. Um, so that's something that's still under discussion, um, but we are working at a number of different angles to make it as, as easy as possible. Okay, and going back, Rosemary had a second question, and, and will PLA be at the ALA annual in Orlando? Um, at ALA in Orlando right now, we do not have plans to do anything specific to digital learn, um, but PLA staff will be there, I'll be there, um, so certainly happy to, to meet or talk. Great, any more questions? And this is Melissa. We're going to stay on for a few minutes to make sure we get all the questions answered. Um, another question we've got here. Um, are there resources available for literacy teachers? Sure. The, um, the community of practice, which I just touched on right at the beginning, um, but it's the other kind of focus of digital learn, um, is actually a board where you can post and share information. Um, we've just revised it, so it doesn't have a whole lot right now, but we are going to be promoting that as a resource for people who are either digital literacy trainers or simply find themselves doing that in a library to share information. So I encourage you to, to visit that aspect of Digital Learn um, and see what's up there and then um, monitor it because that's a good place to ask questions and share resources. Okay, and Scott, um, what about acquiring materials and handouts? How would they go about doing that? Well, as I mentioned, uh, each course has a PDF of the entire course. Um, it's just a link that you can download and print that gives the, the screenshots and the script. Um, we don't have right now uh, kind of shorter, we've been asked for um, shorter handouts to kind of cover key points, um, but we are uh, working on those. I believe Chicago may also be trying to come up with its own um, similar resources that I think they'd be willing to share. But um, So right now, you, you can get the full course transcript for each module on Digital Learn, uh, or you can post on the community of practice to ask people for handouts and tip sheets and things like that. Great, and thanks again to Scott and Andrea. Um, we're going to stay on for a few more minutes uh, just to make sure we get all the questions answered, but for those of you that have places to go and things to do, uh, thanks for being on with us today, and we will see you on next time.